Hi everyone, welcome back to the Bevy and Rust tutorial series where we will slowly be building a first person cheater game from scratch. This is part 2 of the series and in this episode we will be adding simple movement using Bevy Rapier 3D's kinematic character controller system as well as add a gun into the game as an unanimated 3D model. For those of you who didn't follow along with part 1, the source code of part 1 and part 2 as well as any subsequent episodes will be linked in the description. So if you have a basic understanding of Bevy, you should probably be able to follow along after downloading the source code for part 1. Anyways, let's begin. Start off by going into our player file. The first thing we're going to do is add player movement. To start off, we need to separate our player entity into a camera entity and a player entity. The camera entity will be parented to the player entity. This is because currently, if our camera rotates, the collider on our player entity will also rotate, and that's something we do not want. We also need to add some additional components to the player entity, such as the kinematic character controller, which is what will be responsible for handling collision. We can also accomplish this effect by adding a dynamic rigid body to our player and just providing a bunch of constraints to it. But the character controller has a lot of useful features implemented that I think would be a waste to just let go. So for now, we're going to be using the kinematic character controller instead of manually modifying a rigid body to suit our needs. Our player won't do anything right now, so let's add some parameters to the player component, which we will later use to control the movement of the player based on keyboard input. Create two files one called input.rs and one called playermovement.rs. Create a resource in the input.rs file. This resource will be responsible for holding the input info in the current frame. If the x component is positive, that means that we'll be moving forward, and if the y component is positive, that means we're moving to the right. Now go inside our playermovement.rs file. Create a function called update movement input. This system will run every frame and will update our resource based on what keys are being pressed. In this case, W, A, S, and D. At the start of every frame, we reset the resource and then update it accordingly based on what keys are being pressed in the current frame. Now create a function called update movement. This system will not run every frame. It will run every physics update, which in Bevy, we'll just be using the fixed update loop for. This function takes the results of our keyboard input and actually translates our player based on that. You might notice the option kinematic controller output that we're querying for in our player query. The physics library adds this component to our player after we add our character controller. And important information is stored in this output, such as whether the player is grounded, that we're going to make use of. An option only contains a value when it exists. Rust doesn't have a null pointer, so option is used quite commonly. We just need to check whether there's an output component and reset the velocity if the player is grounded. Next, we calculate the forward and right vectors based on the rotation of our camera in the y-axis. We need to make some changes to our actual camera rotation in order to use them properly with trig functions. Using cosine and sine, we can calculate the forward direction. And the right direction is just the perpendicular vector of the forward vector. To ensure the player is always moving at the same speed, we can try to normalize the movement direction. The reason I said try is because if we normalize a zero vector, the normalize function will not work correctly. So we have to do some extra coding to avoid this exception from happening. Inside this function, we can modify the player velocity. It should be noted that kinematic character controllers don't automatically have gravity built in, so we need to simulate this manually. To make the character move, we can modify the translation of the controller. It should be noted that this is not the actual position of the controller, but delta translation, or the change in position. Now we need to add our input system into the update loop. 
add the system that updates our physics in a fixed update loop. This is to ensure accurate behavior across all frame rates. We also need to initialize our input resource here. After running the game, we should have basic player movement implemented. And we are indeed able to move around. But you might notice something strange. Our shooting no longer works. So why does adding movement to the game mess up our shooting? Well that's because we added a hitbox to our player. Whenever we try to shoot, our bullets are colliding with our player's hitbox instead of the targets in the distance that we wanted to collide with. So let's make some modifications to our update player function and also move it into a new file to make the game more organized. We have to modify a lot of our use statements. This is actually relatively simple with all of the Rust Analyzer warnings that are being given. Also, since we separated the player and the camera, we need to make separate queries for the camera and the player. Right now we're just modifying the system to suit our new separated entities. Okay, now back to the original problem. How are we going to prevent our raycast from hitting the player hitbox? We'll use what's called a query filter, which basically decides whether to avoid collisions with certain objects. Naturally, this also extends over to raycast. Our physics library provides a way to do this called predicating, which basically uses a bevy query to indicate whether an entity should be hit or not. So we'll be creating a component called shootable, which is added to every object that is able to be shot. Our query filter will include all objects that have this component, and it will try to access the target component using an option. We will basically be checking whether the entity contains a target component, and if it does, we'll kill the target. Now let's relink this system back in our player plugin, because the system is in a new file now. Okay, now let's add the shootable component to the level. We also need to add it to the targets. Now we need to repurpose our old code, because right now, this function will accept any entity that has the shootable component, but we need to check additionally that they also have a target component, because we can't just insert a dead target component on a wall. If we run the code right now, we should be able to shoot targets again. And indeed, it is working as expected. Okay, on to the second part of the video. Now we'll be adding 3D models to the game. You can either make your own model or download my model off of the GitHub page. I would recommend using my model for now just to see how we set up the model. Now that the model is complete, we need to make sure it meets some standards before adding it to the game. Firstly, the front of the gun should face in the positive Y direction in Blender. If I move it in front, then the Y value should increase. Since Bevy doesn't have an official editor yet, let's visualize how the gun would look with the camera in Blender. Orient the camera exactly at the origin and with a 90 degrees tilt clockwise. We need to adjust a few parameters to make sure the camera looks exactly like Firstly, the Bevy camera by default uses the Super 35 film format size. And this means that the sensor fit size for the height should be 18.6, which can be seen by looking through their source code. Make sure to change this sensor size parameter before setting the field of view to 103 degrees because changing the sensor fit size also makes the field of view change. We need to make sure to change the field of view after setting the sensor size. Now we can just move our 3D model around until it looks good enough. Make sure to make the camera invisible when exporting your 3D model. This can be done by clicking the eyeball icon. We only want to export the 3D model and not the camera itself. When we are satisfied with the position of our model, let's export it. 
Create an assets folder and a models folder inside that assets folder. This is where we will be storing our 3D models. We can limit the exported objects to only visible objects so that our camera doesn't get exported. Additionally, if you have a modifier, enable the apply modifiers in the mesh menu. Currently, just loading in the gun model is pretty easy. Later on, we'll probably create an assets manager or something, which will not allow the game to begin until all of our assets are loaded. But for now, we can just have our models asynchronously load in the background. You might be wondering why we are spawning our gun at the origin. Well this is because later on we're going to parent the gun to our camera entity. And once it's parented, the proper offset will be provided because we've already adjusted the gun in Blender to have that offset. Okay, so the gun got added to the game, but you might notice that our bullets aren't coming out of the gun. So we need to spawn our bullet tracers from the barrel of the gun. To do this, we can spawn an entity at the barrel of the gun. If only we knew where the barrel actually was. We'll find a way to do that later, but for now let's just spawn the entity. The entity will also be parented to the camera, so it can pivot around the camera and spawn at the right point. In Bevy, add child isn't the only way to parent entities. Push children allows us to add multiple entities and parent them accordingly. Okay, now we need to grab the actual position of our bullet barrel. Since Blender's coordinate system and Bevy's coordinate system are actually different, let's create a helper function to convert between them. Now this function might actually be incorrect, I just figured it out by trial and error. So if it's incorrect, someone in the comments please tell me and I'll fix it in the next video. To find out what position the bullet should come out from, I went into Blender and added a really small cube to see what position it would be at if I put it at the front of the gun. Now we just need to take these coordinates and plug them into our Blender to Bevy function. Now we just have to query for this position when we shoot a bullet and we should be fine. And that's pretty much it for this video. You'll notice that it is a bit shorter, but that's because right now we're implementing the mechanics instead of just setting up the fundamentals like last video. I'm going to make the bullet tracer a bit faster because it seems very unrealistic right now. Anyways, that's it for the video. If you guys are struggling with following the tutorial, you can always check the source code on GitHub. Be sure to like and subscribe, and I hope you have a good day.